Act 1, Scene 1, Thunder and Lightning, Enter Three Witches. When shall we three meet again? In thunder, lightning, or in rain? When the hurly-burly's done, when the battle's lost and won, That will be ere the set of sun. Where the place? Upon the heath. There to meet with Macbeth. I come, Grey Malkin. Paddock calls. Anon. Fair is foul, and foul is fair. Hover through the fog and filthy air. They exit. Scene 2 Alarum within Then enter King Duncan, King of Scotland, uh, Malcolm and Donalbane, his sons, Lennox, a nobleman with servants and a bleeding captain. What bloody man is that? He can report, as seemeth by his plight, of the revolt, the new estate. This is the sergeant who, like a good and hardy soldier, fought against my captivity. Hail! Brave friend, say to the king the knowledge of the broil as thou didst leave it. Doubtful it stood, as two spent swimmers that do cling together and choke their art. The merciless MacDonald, worthy to be a rebel, for to that the multiplying villainies of nature do swarm upon him. From the western isles of kerns and gallowglasses is supplied. And fortune, on his damned quarrels smiling, Showed like a rebel's whore. But all's too weak. For brave Macbeth, well he deserves that name. Disdaining fortune with his brandished steel. Which smoked with bloody execution. Like valor's minion carved out his passage till he faced the slave which ne'er shook hands, nor bade farewell to him till he unseamed him from the nave to the chops, and fixed his head upon our battlements. O oh, valiant cousin, worthy gentleman, As whence the sun gins his reflection, shipwrecking storms and direful thunders, so from that spring whence comfort seem to come, discomfort swells. Mark, King of Scotland, mark. 
no sooner justice had, with valor armed, compelled these skipping kerns to trust their heels. But the Norwegian lord, surveying vantage, with furbished arms and new supplies of men, began a fresh assault. Dismayed, not this our captains, Macbeth and Banquo? Yes, as sparrows, eagles, or the hare, the lion. If I say sooth, I must report they were as cannons overcharged with double cracks. So they doubly redoubled strokes upon the foe. Except they meant to bathe in reeking wounds or memorize another Golgotha. I cannot tell. But I'm faint. My gashes cry for help. So well thy words become thee as thy wounds they smack of honor both go get him surgeons exit captain and servants enter ross and angus these are uh, noblemen who comes here the worthy thane of ross What a haste looks through his eyes, so should he look, that seems to speak things strange. God save the king. Whence camest thou, worthy Thane? From Fife, great king. Where the Norwegian banners flout the sky and fan our people cold. Norway himself, with terrible numbers, assisted by that most disloyal traitor, the Thane of Cawdor, began a dismal conflict. Till that Bellona's Bridegroom, lapped in proof, confronted him with self-comparisons, point against point, rebellious arm against arm, curbing his lavish spirit. And to conclude the victory fell on us. Great happiness. That now, Sveno, the Norway's king, craves composition. Nor would we dine him burial of his men, till he dispersed, at St. Combe's Inch, ten thousand dollars to our general use. No more that thane of Cawdor shall deceive our bosom interest. Go, pronounce his present death, and with his former title, greet Macbeth. I'll see it done. What he hath lost, noble Macbeth hath won. They exit. <laughs>